Tuesday, by the way. And your cost analysis was actually due Monday. And I forgot to remind you before the break, because honestly, I forgot. Um, and there were several students who did look at their papers and they had them ready, so um, I don't think it was anybody in this class. We didn't have this were. Class. Good job. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks a lot. All right. But um, I pushed you back to Friday. So we are going to quickly go over exactly how this can be helpful to you, how you can make things a little bit easier on yourself. You may want to write this down because obviously you need to do work and it will be helpful. Right. So first thing is this. Okay, when we were identifying all of our products, Y'all were asking, can I just write everything, like if I'm just going to get paint, can I just do like one big calculation for paint? Yes, when you were just finding your paint, all right? But now when we're doing our cost, you are going to need to figure out room by room, and here's why. Because your rooms are most likely different colors. And you cannot simply say, I need 10 gallons of red paint and your whole house is red. You may need three gallons for one room and only one gallon for another room, and they're different colors. Okay, so you're going to have to do it in a room. So this is the first thing that I suggest. Let's just use a living room as an example. I'm going to make up some dimensions so that we can see exactly how to calculate it and be very specific. Suppose your living room is 15 by 20. All right, the three basic measurements that you're going to need to be able to calculate your cost is your square footage or your area. All right, well, your area is simply 15 times 20. Now, what are we going to use our area for? Floors. We're not doing anything new. Painting okay, you're going to need your standard area for your floors to figure out how much material you need to cover the floors. Yes. <coughs> yes, and, and I'm adding this because last year, that's from last year, and I wasn't as specific last year as I'm doing this year. Okay, and I want this on the page because it's going to help me check your work a lot quicker, and it gives me a lot less work to do. Because you do realize everything you do, I have 40-something papers to check. All right? Okay, so on each page, you're going to need to list your area for your room. You are going to need to list your perimeter. All right? Now, the perimeter of a rectangle is twice the base plus twice the height, basically, right? Or 15 plus 15 plus 20 plus 20, which would be 70 feet, and it's feet, not feet squared, because it's linear. What do we need perimeter for? Brown moldings and baseboards. And wall walls. Not yet. Okay. You need the area of your walls which we said is the perimeter of your room, which guess what? Hey, you just found it. It's 70 well, it times your ceiling height. Now, you cannot do less than an 8-foot ceiling unless you're creating a house for midgets. All right? We're not. Okay? And we're also not creating a house for giants. But the standard ceiling height in a house is 8 feet. I recommend either 8, 9, or 10. I wouldn't go more than 10 because your cost is going to be outrageous. All right, so let's say that the height of my ceilings are 10 feet. Then it's the perimeter times the height. So my wall area would be 700 square feet. All right, and this is what I need to calculate how much sheetrock I need. Um, if I am painting how much paint I'm going to need, if I have wallpaper, how much wallpaper I need, which is two words, not one. And uh, you may not have sheetrock, you may have picked out like a uh, some sort of paneling or something like that. And your IT security. 
Okay. Now, you need this information before you even start calculating cost. If you do this first, then the rest is easy. Okay? Start with this. Otherwise, you're going to be calculating area, you know, every time. You're going to be calculating perimeter over and over and over and over again. Put these calculations at the top of your page. Now, let's suppose... And then now, I want you to start with your, your favorites. I want you to do your total cost on all your favorites first. Okay, so what you're going to be looking at is, um, how come I can't go down? I don't know. Move the, move the window over. Bam, smaller. Hey, watch. Double click, stand on your head, and then turn around. All right. Here we go. <laughs> no. Ow. That was cool. Okay. Right, right. Right. <laughs> How did she do that? <laughs> you guys work. wish you could see it, but you can't. Try it. No. Push it. <laughs> <laughs> Quit wasting time and touch the board. All right. Suppose you're getting tile for your living room, and... Um, your tile is one. Well, let's do it. Hundred dollars square. Let's do it differently. Once you're you're not getting a one by one, a twelve by twelve piece of tile. You're getting those big tile that are like eighteen by eighteen inches. It's just I want to show you this example, okay? Because that would be some more calculations. What? How much does one piece of tile cover if it's eighteen by eighteen inches? <laughs> One point one half. Excuse me. One point five times one point five, which would be one point five. Two point two five. All right. So one covers two point two five square feet, and it costs five dollars. All right. So here's where you decide how many actual tiles you need. 300 divided by 2.2, yeah, that. Okay, yeah, that's not working. That's not a number. Yeah, it is. Where's that the number? All right, it says you need 133.3. So you're going to have 34. Okay. Actually, we're going to round up to fives, okay, because you want to have some extra. So if you need 135 of them, and each one is $5, then it's going to cost you, da 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 Sweet fingers. $667 to put the tile, your favorite tile, in that living room. All right? Then you move on to your crown moldings. Okay? If you need 70 feet of crown molding, and it, huh? How much one covers the price? And then how many you need? And then what's your total price is? Okay? Then, and the reason you're going to put all that information is because when you get to your very final answer and you decide, I'm not making money, you can simply come back here and change this information and get your new price. About how much money should we end up money. making? Right, exactly. Okay. No, Shh. For your a question. What did you say? About how much money should we end up making? I can't tell you. You, you say, just want to make a profit. You say yes. Oh, the little yes. Is my tile like our tiles we were using in year two was 18 by 18? No, I'm just giving you an example. So, okay? You may have chosen floors. And your floors may come in a box. And one box covers so many square feet. Then you're going to do it as <coughs> this many square feet for a box, and this is the cost. And so you'll figure out how many boxes you need. Okay? Mm -hmm. You may do carpet where the carpet is just a regular square foot measurement, and so you're going to figure exactly the square footage. So it depends on what you're buying. Yes. Uh, two things. Is it cheaper to do it that way, or is it judged by how many paint, how many bucks of paint you need by square feet? Because for some reason, I'm making loads of cash on this thing. Did you say the square footage? 